All right, we're live. Uh, <laughs> Saturday, October 18th. And we're here with the one and only Luis Sangel, uh, coach at UILS. When doing out there. Mind, accelerated, empowered mind. And this guy is honestly amazing. He's the man. I'm going to read out his quick bio so you can get a feel for who we're dealing with right now. And then he's going to get right into it. So well, let me switch to him. Luis Angel is a memory coach who teaches students how to memorize their school material quickly by using the memory techniques that the top mental athletes from around the world use. He's competed in the USA Memory Championship and the World Memory Championship in London, England. He's officially memorized a 114-digit number in under five minutes and a deck of cards in two minutes and 40 seconds. At the 2014 USA Memory Championship, Luis Angel brought a memory team from L.A. to the competition, and they got a gold medal in the numbers game. Luis Angel loves to learn and teach others how to learn more efficiently and learn in a fun and unique manner. Now, real quick, just take in a 114-digit number. Most people struggle after seven digits. If you give them more than a group of seven numbers in a row, they'll forget anything else. 114 digits. In under five minutes. I don't know how long it would take me to, if I could even possibly memorize that, but hopefully today we're going to learn some stuff that's going to help us move in that direction. And a deck of cards in two minutes and 40 seconds, man, that's heavy. And on top of that, coaching his memory team to a gold medal in the numbers event, he's a next level coach, so you guys are going to have a great time. So without further ado, here's the man himself. Awesome. Thanks, Sergio. And uh, I hope everyone out there is having a great Saturday morning. I mean, it's actually 7 a.m. over here where I'm at in uh, Orange County area near L.A. So, um, yeah, let's, I mean, all that is, uh, you know, awesome, what Sergio just mentioned. Um, but really, you know, it, it was, you know, getting into this was kind of a struggle for myself. And I'll go into my story. I do that. I just want to say, you know, thank you to Sergio, of course, because he's the one that's putting this together. And uh, he's been consistent and that's a key to success in anything right it's consistency right I wouldn't be at the level that I'm at at these you know memory competitions as a mental athlete if I wasn't consistent with the activity of practice he's been at this he has his own company run your mission and uh, you know very doing amazing things he you know he, he talks about um, how to find your purpose right how to find your mission I actually have his wristband uh, right here and I wear it every day and it helps me run my mission of teaching you know young individuals how to improve their memory how to master their self confidence as well in schools because not just about memory it's about you know your internal um, you know feelings and, and and what you believe in as well about yourself and about others so I do a lot of that at, at the schools and I know Sergio does a great job of helping others find their mission right so thanks a lot Sergio for putting these together man <clears throat> thanks a lot man um, you're the best <laughs> and also, so, real quick, before you get way too into it, same deal as always, because I always forget. <laughs> and hopefully, after this session, I'll be able to remember to tell you up front that yeah. on the UI Less Momentum session page, posted right at the top, pinned, we're live with Luis. Post any questions and comments here. Anything he asks you for feedback, any questions, whatever your answers are, any comments, any questions you have for him, post it right up there. He'll be able to see it. And back to you. Yeah, make sure to do that. I know that it might be a little bit of a lag time, and you know, usually when I do these types of talks with students, it's live interaction, right? I'm right there. I'm I'm getting feedback as I'm talking about this. So I want to hear from you guys as I'm going along through this. I'm gonna have a few little, you know, interactive activities as we're going along through this. So make sure to type in there, write comments, write you know whatever it is that pops into your mind while we're going through this, and. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully we'll have a great time, uh, uh, you know, going through the techniques that all of my students learn, and again, all, that all of the top mental athletes have learned in order to memorize these things. So you know, real quick, I did not. I wake up one day and I'm like, let me just memorize a you know 100 digit number, right? It didn't work out that way. It actually, it it, <laughs> it took a a huge, I want to say like huge, like mental just. You know, low point in my life where I was I was fed up with the way that things were going. Right, I was in school and I wasn't doing that great. I actually barely graduated high school. I had D's and S throughout high school. I had a very low GPA, 
And I, if it wasn't for my English teacher giving me a, a, a really a D minus in in that class, I wouldn't have graduated high school, right? In college, I was like, things are gonna change, things are gonna get better. I'm gonna be able to focus. I'm gonna be able to get good grades. And it definitely was not the case. I kept struggling. I kept getting bad grades. And I was like, that's it. I need to fix this, right? Um, I lay, I, I kind of attribute a lot of the issues that I had to having a bad memory and a bad ability to focus. So I, I got a program, um, like a memory improvement program, right, from my mentor, Ron White. And he, he taught me the basics and essentials for being able to memorize anything really very quickly. I went through it right away. I was in a very uh, deep need for memory improvement, right? So I went through it right away, and within the first week, I was already memorizing like, you know, 20 items at a time, right? I would tell my family members, my friends, like, give me just 20 random items. Let's see if I can do this. Let's put this to the test. And sure enough, I was able to do it, and then I'm like, okay, let me see if I can apply this to school. So I did that, and, you know, I went real quick from getting, you know, Ds and Fs in college to getting straight A's, uh, 4.0 GPA. So that's, I, once I saw that, I was like, okay, this is cool. Let me see if I can take this to another level, right? I went out to competitions. I've gone again to the USA competition, the world competition. And from there, I was like, this is great. It's I, I've proven this, uh, that it works for myself. Right now, let's see if I can teach this to others. And I went last year, and uh, I went to a school in Los Angeles, taught the techniques to some high school students. They've never you know, learned anything like this before. And they grasped the ideas after you know going there every week. And we went to the competition, and we... You know, first time ever that an LA team has gone to the East Coast and competed against these schools that have been doing this for years and years and years, right? And we we got the gold medal in, in one of the events. We got third place overall, but uh, but it was just a great experience. All of my students have gone on to um, you know high level university universities in California. They've got two of them have gone to UC Irvine. It's actually right down the street from where I live right now. Um, one of them has gone to UC Santa Barbara out here. I know that. We have, you guys saw Emily's um, you know, video, she's actually at UC Santa Barbara. Uh, we, I have a student that has gone to MIT, which is a very, <laughs> it, it, that school ranks amongst you know, one of the top schools in the country, um, I think in the world. So these techniques work, right? They work for myself, they work for others. I've proven that and I, I'm still continuing that um, in some high schools and colleges. And I want to teach them to you because every, all the top mental athletes use the techniques, right? So if you guys are ready to learn this, I just want you to write in the comment section, like, I'm ready, you know, improve my memory, or write something cool, like, I want extreme memory power or something like that, right? So write that in the comment section on Facebook. And you'll also see me drinking water throughout, you know, this session, and I'll talk a little bit about why that's very, you guys already know that water is important, right? And guess what? I'm doing it with my Gills 2013 <laughs> bottle. So Serge was drinking water. It's a must, and I'll, I'll give you some neuroscience. I'll get kind of deep into this, so I hope that you're ready, um, into why we need water for our brain to perform, right? And other cool, you know, neuroscience stuff. So I'll get into that towards the later portion of this. So make sure, get your water, drink up <laughs> as uh, we move forward. Let's see, do we have any comments? Who's ready? Who's ready for this? Uh, how do I refresh this real? Let me see. Um, it's kind of weird not being able to like see you guys. Uh, let's see. We have a couple. Com we have a couple comments actually. We got Omid right. on here. Ready, Stark. Unleash my the memory within. <laughs> Luis is my hero. And then we got Ariana. Please teach me your ways. I love that. You guys are ready. Okay. More people. We have a bunch more people on here live. They haven't commented yet. They might be lagging. Ariana's ready. I think Antonia is ready. Um, but it hasn't even loaded the comment yet. A couple people are, are ready to rock. All right, we got Antonia on here, ready, okay. All right, let's do this. So let me um, show you guys real quick. Usually I'll do like a live demonstration where I memorize like a 40-digit number. It sometimes takes a little bit longer. Um, you know, I have to have students write down, interactive and all that. So what I'll do is I'll go right into just teaching you guys how to do this, right? Um, let's... Go ahead and hopefully this works. Um, I'm gonna switch this over. I can I can share right, Serge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. On the left, the little green thing. We got some more comments too. And Elisa's ready and hydrated. Jeff is ready. I'm sure he's hydrated too. Got a bunch of people yeah. ready to rock. 
I want to first. Uh, I want to ask one more question while I'm setting this up as well. Um, who here? I just want to get get a feel for um, it. You know, what's learning because one of the issues that I used to have um, is not being able to focus right. And like when I would read something, I would like be going through the pages, going through the pages. I'll be like, okay. and then I'll pause and I'll be like, I have no clue what I just read. Right? If that has ever happened to any of you, I just want to know kind of like what your issues are right now when it comes to like learning um, or, or or memory, right? Or do, you, do you have difficulties remember certain things? Like I, I used to forget even if I had like eaten for the day, right? That, that was a big thing. My mom used to ask me, uh, ¿Qué comiste? What did you eat today? And I'm like, Ma, I really, I have no clue what I ate today, which was very <laughs> uh, so I want to know from you guys what type of like memory issues um, do you guys go through on a regular basis, or do you have a perfect memory right now? I just want to you know put that in the Facebook chat right there while I put, uh, pull up these slides. Uh, cool. Well, have, you, have you ever um, had any type of memory issues in the past? Yeah, I was about to drop one right now actually on you. Yeah. Um, while we let some people load up, we got even a couple more people ready. So for a speech like. I used to, back in like high school and whatever, memorize like the whole speech, right? Now when I go give a talk, right. I just remember the key concepts, maybe five bullet points that I'm going to talk about. The chat, well, not the challenge, because I can just go and talk for an hour, and that's what I did my last one. I have one coming up on Monday, and I've only memorized three key words that I'm going to talk about. Yeah. And so with that, if I want to remember a specific example, or like a specific quote or something within one of those, that that's something that maybe you can address. Remembering okay. a specific like, because I have I used to remember the full script, like a full like every word of like a ten minute speech or something in high school or whatever. Right. Now I just remember the key points. But if I want to remember a specific quote or something like that, maybe you can speak to that. Right. We've actually right. got so many people, um, so I can read a couple of these comments. Isaiah, booyah, let's get it. Uh, I feel as though if I were to learn something, I can't recall the information. What? I feel as if though if I were to learn something, I can't recall the information. I had to read that twice. I had to. I have to highlight as I read books in order to be able to attempt to memorize it. That was only uh, Julian. The video keeps stopping for me. Is that happening for anyone else? Hmm. Uh, I don't know, man. I would check your Wi-Fi. Maybe plug in a uh, hard cable. Antonia, challenge to remember the reading materials. Ariana, I'm the same as you. I'm the same way as you are. When I read something for school, like in history, I'll read the entire chapter, but then won't remember anything. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's happening all the time. So we'll see if uh, we can change that up uh, by the end of this. So real quick, I am going to get right into the slides, and I'll um, also address what Sergio was talking about um, in this video session. All right, hangout session. So... Let's go ahead and switch on over. You're not gonna see my face for for a bit, so um, let's go to this real quick. All right. So as you can see here, just uh, real quick, you know, we're right into just how to memorize vocabulary words. I think that's one of the biggest things that uh, students always ask me. They're studying either for the, like the SAT exam, right? They're studying for um, just their English exams. They're um, you know, biology tests, things of that nature, and there's a lot of vocabulary in all these different classes, right? So I am going to go over just a few words where I'm going to teach you the techniques, apply them right away so you can, like, learn vocabulary words very quickly. So once you have gone through this, you'll be able to apply this to um, all of the other, you know, say, vocabulary words that you want to learn or memorize in your classes, right? So memorizing vocabulary words presented by, of course, me, Louis Angel. Uh, and my company is AE Mind. You can check that out, aemind.com right there. Um, so the key to memorization is ready to unlock your hidden memory potential. So how, the, the way that you unlock your memory skills is by visualizing. That's it. We've gone over in Gills, you know, different visualization te techniques. Um, they've, you know, have you visualize, say, your life being very perfect, and they also do the opposite, right, during the Dickens process. So in... Um, in with being able to memorize all of the top mental athletes, what they do is essentially we're creative storytellers, right? So all we're doing is create very, um, very visually stimulating stories in our minds about the information that we want to memorize. So we don't just see um, like 
you know what I'm saying? Just see a number, crazy images going on inside of our minds with those numbers. Right? So I'll switch back over to my face. Uh, yeah, okay. So like let's say it's uh, Sergio. Shout out, I don't know, a two-digit number. Uh, <clears throat> 89. 89. So for 89, which I know one of the reasons why you picked that. Um, <laughs> so 89. Football. So when I somebody gives me that number 89 to memorize, or I'm seeing that on a piece of paper, or like let's say it's a uh, like a historic date, right? It's a part of a historic date, and I need to memorize that number, which in mine and Sergio's case it is <laughs> um, 89. It, I would see a football, right? So I would see a football, and then I would attach that to a location, and we'll go over that in a minute. So. Um, Let's say if uh, the location is like the top of my bald head, a picture, maybe somebody just like hitting me in the head with a football and it bounces off, right? It bounces off my head. So football and then when I want to recall that number, all I have to do is, is see my head and be like, okay, what did I picture on my head? What's going on on top of my head? And I'll be like, oh yeah, somebody just, maybe Sergio threw a football at me, at me and I didn't catch it, it just hit the top of my head, right? So football, I'm like, okay, now football, what was that number? I'll translate it back into the number, which is, of course, 89. So the reason a, uh, Sergio probably chose 89 was because I was born in 89 and so was he, so it's a very historic year right there. <laughs> historic <laughs> epic year. <laughs> two, two great minds were born in 1989. Wow. Uh, okay. Um and while you're drinking, we've actually got a couple more comments. A couple yeah. of these are interesting. Maybe you can speak to them. Um, Ariana said, it's weird because I can listen to a song once or twice and recall the entire thing after listening to it. And that's that's definitely important. Why? I, I know you're watching that. And Omid, Omid meant um, not memorize. He meant call upon, which is, I guess, remember more than the right. actual. The, the initial memorizing, it's the recalling, I think, is what Omid's trying to say. And then... Nicholas, a uh, challenge to memorize info for tests, everything in general. So he's just all over the place. All right. We'll uh, see if we can address that. And, yeah, Rihanna songs. Um, yeah, uh, songs, for me, I have to, like, there's people, sorry, Ariana, where you can listen to a song, just by, like, listening to it, you can recall it. For me, I have to use these techniques to be able to memorize a song. I can listen to it and recall portions of it, but if I apply the techniques that I'm about to teach everyone, then the the songs stick in my memory a lot longer, and a lot, I can memorize them a lot quicker, right? So there, at the USA competition, there's a, an event where you have to memorize a brand new poem in 15 minutes, never been published, essentially, it's like a song, a brand new song, never been released, and you have 15 minutes to memorize everything on there. If there's like a comma, you have to put a comma, period, period, um, capitals, all that you know, good stuff. Um, and you have to memorize everything word for word, right? So I use these techniques to to memorize things such as you know songs and and poems and things of that nature. So let's see if uh, these can help you out right now. Uh, let me switch back over. Hold on. Um, so yeah, again, I'm just visualizing. I'm attaching. I'm associating these images that I'm creating to different locations, either on my body or in my home. Um, and then when I want, want to recall it, I just see, okay, what was a little creative story that um, that I pictured, right? What, what was it? Then I, I recall that image, and then I translate it back to the information that I, that I originally remembered. So um, we'll go back to the screen. Share. All right. So vocabulary words. The technique for a vocabulary word, it's the same thing. We turn the vocabulary word into a picture. We turn the definition of that vocabulary word into a picture, and then what we do is mesh it together to create a little story, essentially how we did with the football, right? So example is benevolent. It's an adjective. It means well-meaning and kindly. Uh, some synonyms are kind, good, kind-hearted, compassionate, caring. Right? So benevolent, adjective. Convert that into an image. What we do is we want to... Uh, think of what this word reminds us of, right? So I split it up into two sections, like you see on the screen. Ben, I pictured like a bone, and Evelyn, I picture an envelope. So Ben, Evelyn, bone, envelope. And then as a bonus, sometimes I'm like, okay, I, I just need an extra little trigger to help me remember parts of this word, right? So sometimes I'll throw in something else, and in this case, I'll throw in like lint for the last part, lint, right? So bone, envelope, lint. Um, I might picture the bone inside of an envelope with lint inside of that, right? So you just picture that in your mind right now. And 
we'll uh, attach that to the definition in a moment. So the picture for the definition, right? So wow, me and kindly, we convert that into an image. And I picture a kind dog. But in this case, I like a kinder dog. So maybe picture a dog <laughs> with some flowers on its head. Um, so picture that in your mind right now, or you can just see it on the screen. So wow, me and kindly, I just picture a kind dog. And kind of what I did there, as you notice, um, I piggybacked off of the picture that I created for the word. So I picture a bone in that picture. So um, what can kind of relate to that? Oh, I picture a dog, a kind dog. Now what we do is create a story out of it, right? We blend those two images together. And I have this story right here. The dog uh, got an envelope in the mail with a bone uh, for being a very kind, for being very kind to its owner, right? So maybe you have the dog there. Um, I have actually, I have a Siberian Husky. Let me switch back to me. I have a Siberian Husky, so um, I can picture that. You know, my Siberian Husky was very nice, very kind. I have a few chihuahuas in my backyard, and not here, but I'm my mom's home. Um, and maybe she didn't bite the dog for the day, right? She didn't fight with the other dogs. So I gave her an envelope, and she kind of already knew what was in there. She opened it up. She saw, um, she saw a bone in there, and it had some lint. So she was brushing it off, licking it off, and she just munched on that bone, right? It has an award, a reward for being kind. So, um, can you guys kind of picture that in your mind? So, bone, envelope, um, with lint on that. Can you picture that, Sergio, in your mind? That's such an amazing um, thing. Some of the ones you've told me were, like, interesting, but that one is, that one's awesome. <laughs> very cool. Yeah, it's very, very different. <laughs> um, so, we'll see if you guys can. Whoa, what's going on? Okay. So, what does it mean? What does benevolent mean? Um, I'll see if you guys can... Write that on the chat box before I ask Sergio, uh, see if he remembers what benevolent means. Yeah, I, rem I remember the whole thing, man. So we got the bone in the envelope with some lint on it, and then a yeah. dog with some flowers <laughs> on his head, <laughs> and the dog was kind, a kind dog. And so yeah. the dog, because the dog was kind, we gave it an envelope and it had a bone in it. It brushed the lint off, and then it, it just chomped on that bone. Yeah, buddy. So you got it. So what does benevolent mean? So you, with that picture in mind, you get, you now have to kind of uh, uh, decipher what the meaning is, right? So what does benevolent mean? Yeah, exactly. Because just remembering the word is pointless. You need to know what it means, yeah. right? And the yep. dog really helps with that. It's being kind, right? Exactly. Yep. It's an adjective. It means kind, uh, well-meaning, kindly, uh, being generous. So that's uh, so I sort of, sort of got it right. Boom. If it was live, I would have everybody give Sergio like a round of applause right now. Like, good job, Sergio. Um, but because we're not in front of people, actually, I still want you guys to do that at home. I want you to just give Sergio a round of applause right now, like super loud. Wake up your family members. Uh, let Sergio hear it all the way from Canada. So a round of applause from wherever you're at. I know there's people here from like Australia, probably Florida, and different different parts of the world. So round of applause for Sergio. Omid's on here. It's one in the morning in Australia right now. Oh, hey, yeah, check it out. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Any any comments on that yet? Um, let's see if there are any. We have a comment. <laughs> these sound effects are jokes. I've never used these in a Hangout. Oh, Jeffrey, the man. All right, he's on here. I see you, Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey, I see you. Bone, says... <laughs> Bone and volant. <laughs> Bone and volant. Bone and volant. That's funny. Um, and it's happened in the past, actually, even to my, you know, with myself, where I've said, let me switch back. Um, I said, you know, I've created these pictures, and I've said, the you know the picture that I created instead of the actual word, but with that, um, and I'll go over to the point. But essentially, it just comes out to reviewing, right? Just go ahead and review the the, the word a few times. Consciously you know that it's benevolent and not bone envelope, envelope or envelope, right? So uh, it's all about the review aspect of it, and that helps you um, not only know what it is, but also retain that information for a longer period of time. Like if, if Sergio asked me right now, um, like what the 114 digit number was, and I memorized after the USA competition, I'll be like, I'll, I'll be honest, I have no clue what it was, right? I forgot it almost, uh, I think it took maybe a day or two before it really just completely washed off from my brain. 
And it was essentially because I did not review that number. If I would have reviewed it a few times, uh, maybe throughout that, that same day and then the next day and then a few days after that, then I was I would still be like, okay, here it is, Sergio, boom, boom, boom. It's two, three, four, whatever. Um, but because I didn't review it, I don't remember it. Your brain, it's essentially like a use it or lose it type of situation. If you don't use that information, you're more than likely going to lose it unless it's very emotional, very powerful, um, and uh, and yeah, and then your brain will be like, okay, this is something that we should store for a longer period of time. Um, so use it or lose it, and Jeff, yeah, just review it, and then that won't happen right there. So I do it for my, who else? Uh, kind, compassionate, nice. I do it for my broski. Uh, Omen says, Ariana, I'm loving these sound effects, Sergio. Um, <laughs> Yo, I actually have a real quick question for you. When you're yeah. making a word into several different images and words, does it is it important to make it different than the word, like bone instead of Ben? Or is it okay to or even useful to actually split up the word into specific things? The, um, like, things? Because we turned Ben into bone. Is it okay? Because I have a friend, Ben, who is very kind. So could yeah. I just use Ben's name, or is it better to actually switch the word into something else? Yeah, if, if, I, if there's many, there have been many situations like when my students do, they'll use like people, right? Use a person. If um, like for cards, I just created a brand new system where I'm memorizing instead of like a two-digit number or um, say one set of one card at a time, I'm memorizing chunks at a time now, right? For for cards, I'm memorizing three cards at a time. For uh, numbers, I'm memorizing six numbers at a time. So I'm creating like one or so say for cards and numbers, I have people as representations for those numbers now. So um, so yes, definitely like for Ben, if you picture your friend Ben being very kind, doing something kind for others, maybe doing like a give back type of thing, being compassionate with other people, then definitely use that as a trigger. Because all this is really is a trigger. Tony Robbins says you got to take for you to learn anything very quickly, take something that you don't know, something you're learning for the first time, and attach that to something that you already know. So Ben, you know your friend, right? You can see his face, you can see his mannerisms, right? Now attach that with something you don't know, so benevolent, maybe have him, have him doing something nice. Very, he's a very kind individual. Um, and that will give you the trigger for benevolent. So when you see that word in the future, benevolent, Ben, Ben. Oh yeah, Ben. That's my friend, Ben, and he's being very kind. So that word is very kindly while well meaning. So definitely, Sergio, um, that's uh, something great that you pointed out. So do that for sure. So keep it unique. Keep it, you know, whatever you feel is you can uh, best trigger these, say, memories um, or these definitions, use that for sure. Awesome. Yeah, I actually came up with a crazy story for it. Benevolent. So Ben, like one of my buddies, he's in one of my coaching groups, and he's super kind. And then Evo is um, like a race car. It's a Mitsubishi Evo Lancer. <laughs> so I picture him like driving that car like really fast. And then mm -hmm. Lent is, um, is basically a time when you just give something up. And I remember one time I gave up Oreos. And so I picture him driving a race car on his way to go pick up some Oreos. <laughs> That's what's <we'll see. laughs> Yeah, that, powerful story. I love that, man. And yeah, keep it unique. Keep it, you know, create pictures that you know that you, you have a strong connection for, and it would make it easier for one. It would make it fun, right? Because it's a fun. You just create something fun, and like, oh man, I want to learn this. This is a fun picture that you just uh, story that you just created um, and two it's gonna help you with the recall because it was fun it was engaging um, you're more than likely are gonna be able to recall all this stuff. like say you're taking the test right in English class um, I know you're already graduated Sergio but uh, you know let's say for the students out there they're taking a test and they want to remember that word all they gotta do is picture the the story that you just created so ban in an Evo going out and uh, you know maybe race for for Oreos for Lent um, <laughs> So um, there we go, man. Uh, let's go back into this. Hold on one second. Uh, all right. What does it mean? And then I'll also go over uh, some names for you guys. So if you guys are having trouble remembering names, I'll teach you how to remember everybody's name from this point forward. Um, so stick around, and we'll go through that after all this. So more words. Uh, let's go go into a few extra words. You know, tawdry language, gregarious, and pulchritude. If you guys already know what those mean, great. Um, I'm going to teach you how to memorize them, um, how to memorize, well, how to use the techniques to memorize these words so you can learn other words more quickly, all right? And if you don't know what these means, uh, what these words mean, so I'm going to actually teach you how to do that. And um, uh, these are actually SAT-based words. So if you are, you know, a high school student right now, 
um, or even a college student and want to learn college level words, well, these are it, and you will be able to apply this to um, learning all those SAT words and college level words very quickly. So let's go right into these. So tawdry. What does tawdry mean? It's an adjective. It means cheap and poor quality. I know it's not the most uplifting word, but uh, sometimes you're gonna get these types of words um, in your, you know, in your study. So you're gonna have to learn how to memorize them as well. Um, and I'll tie this into like why this is important just in life as well. I'll tell you. Uh, with these words, I'll, I'll give you a life lesson out of it. Um, so we'll go over that after this. So Tawdry, convert that into an image. You guys are, uh, kind of already know the, the process to this, right? So Tawdry, I picture a towel that's drying. Tawdry, towel that's dry, drying. It's very wet towel, so maybe you put it up to, to dry. Um, cheap and poor quality. So I just picture like a cheap towel, right? A very cheap towel. Um, now I glue these two images together. So I picture a towel. The towel couldn't dry my face, my wet face, because it was made out of cheap material, right? So tawdry, towel, uh, it couldn't just dry my face because it, was, it wasn't of the highest quality material. So tawdry, what does it mean? Put down in the comment section and uh, tawdry adjective. Sergio, you're going to be my uh, for today. So what does tawdry mean? Made, to be made of cheap material. Mm -hmm. Cheap or it's, it's a cheap towel that's not helping you dry your face. <laughs> right, so there, there we go. That's a definition for tawdry. Let's move on to the next one. Languid, without energy or spirit, lazy, slow, sluggish. I know sometimes um, you know we can get that way. We have a lack of energy. Um, we don't want to do many things that we say our goals or things that we set for the day. Like you know, or we get into procrastination mode, right? So we get very languid. Or like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Or uh, you know, you have five alarms that you have set off, and you're like, man, I don't want to wake up right now. I just hit the snooze button, you know, a few times, and you just laying in bed all day long, right? So languid. Sometimes we get that way, you know, and. Um, Sometimes it can be a good thing, sometimes it can't, uh, depending on, like, let's say if you put in a lot of work. How do I go back? Um, okay. I need to have this on another screen. Hold on. Okay, so yeah, sometimes language, being languid is good when you want to just relax, right? You've, you've had a long week and then you want to just chill out for one day, right? Or a few hours on a day. Just don't want to do anything, which is great. You know, go out to the pool, go out to Kahata, or just relax at home, watch a movie. But many times when we want to do something, we if we apply that being languid, being lazy um, to our life, then we're not going to really progress, right, and, and do the things that we really want to do. So, so try to memorize that word and also um, how to move away from that after uh, I go over this word. Um, so picture, we want to convert this into a picture, languid. I picture a lane and a squid. So here's an example of how the uh, the trigger for the word won't necessarily directly um, reflect the actual word that we're trying to make. Squid and squid. There's no S in language, right? So we just picture a squid. Um, or, you know, I, I created a squid. So how do we do this? Again, your brain, you're, you're very, you got to give yourself um, a lot of credit for, uh, for being a very smart individual. Your brain is very smart. It will uh, distinguish the fact that there's no S in here the more that we review. I kind of went over that when Jeffrey pointed that out earlier. So you you could picture squid in here and then with the review aspect uh, of it um, you will distinguish the fact that okay it's a languid and not lane squid alright so um, so I just want, I wanted to throw that out there so we'll picture lane squid and without energy or spirit so maybe it's just a tired and lazy squid just laying down right create a little story out of that glue them together on top of the lane like on the road on the main road you have this giant just lazy squid there and then maybe you're driving towards it like go around go around I don't want to be bothered right now right so lane squid so lazy squid just laying across the lane so real quick guys what does lane in the chat box over there on Facebook and I'll give it about a, you know, a few seconds before I ask Sergio what it means so that uh, he, he doesn't give you guys the answer right away. <laughs> so, the, Sergio, can you, guys, can you kind of picture the stories that I'm giving you right here? Okay, yeah, man. So we got a lane and a squid, and it's basically lazy. So we got a big lazy squid hogging up the lane. <laughs> <laughs> so language means lazy. without energy. Without energy. Without energy. Lazy, low, sluggish, just laying there. So, you know, again, sometimes we get into those modes 
And one of the things that can help us out, and all Sergio as well, like because he's very, he's a very active indiv individual. He's running, he's helping run a um, a huge company outside of Canada, and he's also running his business as well, going out there and giving talks. So for myself, again, waking up, having certain habits will get you out of this lazy uh, mode, right? So. Um, you know, for me, it's getting up, right? I'll, I'll go out, I'll drink water, I'll go to the restroom, come out, I'll do a few push-ups, and that just gets my blood flowing, right? Gets my blood flowing. Um, and then I'll also, I'll, I'll add a little journaling in the morning. I'll go outside, do a little journaling, um, or I'll do a little meditation session. That just helps me, you know, move forward with the progress. So, again, um, th there's this law of physics, right? An object at motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest. So, if you're lazy and you don't get up, if you don't move around, then you're going to stay there, right? If you're being active, you get up, you drink water, you're doing a few push maybe in the morning, you're going to tend to be more active and not get into those lazy cycles, right? Those uh, languid mode, that languid mode. So being active, just getting into certain habits will definitely help you out with that. Um, another thing for me is just visualizing my day, how I want my day to be like, right? So I might picture myself uh, accomplishing a few tasks, like maybe doing this webinar in the morning, right? Uh, before getting on, I told Sergio, like, give me a few minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm just going over kind of what I'm going to be talking about. And then also, I was going over what I was going to do later on today, right? So I'm actually going to go to a conference in a moment. And after this, um, we're going to network with several individuals, come back. Um, uh, we're going to have uh, uh, actually Sergio's uh, siblings are here. So Sergio's brother and sister are here. Here at the beach afterwards, right? Hang out for a bit, and then I'm gonna come back, do a little bit of work, gonna go do a few extra things. So I'm visualizing my day because that, that's gonna juice me. I'm like, oh man, I want to do that. I want to do all these activities leading up to say the little hangout we're gonna do later on, right at the beach. Uh, so kind of you're dangling the carrot on yourself to want to go out and do those activities so you won't be lazy all day. So um, that's very rewarding. So do that as well for yourself. Visualize your day how you want it to be, and then end it with something powerful. Maybe in the middle of your day, add something kind of to dangle the carrot so you want to move forward to uh, finish all the different activities. And don't do that activity unless you've already completed everything else, right? The must in your life. So, Sergio, what are um, some ways that kind of help you move away from saying that language mode or that lazy mode um, in your life? So for me, like, one of the biggest things is definitely being associated with the reason why you want to go do all this stuff, right? Sometimes, like, let's say you want to go work out, you, you're meaning to, you know you should, and you get up, and then you're like, oh, man, I don't know. I don't know if today I want to. I'm in pain from yesterday, or I'm tired. I went to bed a little bit later because I was working or whatever. As soon as you realize what yeah. your reason why is, why you want to go work out, why you must, why you should, all the reasons why, that's the energy that will get you to stop being lazy and get up, right? So that's a definitely a really powerful one for me, just being associated to your reason why. And Katie talked about that last time. I think almost everyone has. It's one of the most important things for sure because 80% yeah. is why, 20% is how. So as long as you know what your why is, oh, yeah. you'll make it happen. Yeah, that's actually yeah. He hit he hit the the nail right right there. Uh, I don't even know the metaphor for that, but anyway, he, he was on point. <laughs> um, so he uh, yeah. So why why is it that you want to do it? Like for me, the reason why I wanted to um, to do very well in school, and you know, I learned the memory technique great. But if I didn't put that into action, it was going to be pointless, right? So one of the reasons why I actually put them into action, it was because I wanted to, I saw myself in the future being able to teach this to others. I'm like, okay, I want to learn this because I want to see if I can do this for myself so I can teach this to, for, and in the beginning it was just like, so I can teach this to my future kids, right? I wasn't even seeing myself teaching this to like other students. I'm like, I want to see um, if I can teach this. Like I, I went way into the future. Um, and I'm like, can I teach this? Can I be a good role model? Can I teach it's a memory skills to my kids so they don't go to the same struggles that I went to. Um, and that was a great motivator. And then after I started going through it, I'm like, okay, what about more like uh, closer to me, more like in the immediate future? What can I, how can I uh, attach a carrot in front of me, um, a reason why, so I can go through this process? So, and then at that point, I'm like, okay, what if I create a company so I can teach this to other students within like the next few months, next year or so, right? And it's essentially what I ended up doing after I got straight A's. So definitely having a strong reason why you want to do anything will help you um, get out of that language or lazy mode. So um, let me see if anybody put a few things out there in the next few minutes. I think, or, Rihanna, I think everyone's just so in the zone watching because we have a bunch of viewers, but they're not coming because <laughs> they're just like glued to their screen. <laughs> so present. I, 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 
I hope that's the case and it's not just me and you here. <laughs> still here. No, no, um, I see the number of viewers. We have a bunch. All right, cool, cool. All right, so let's uh, go forward. And if you get any comments, just go ahead and just stop me, Sergio, and then we'll go ahead and uh, answer some questions or just go over those comments. Uh, so gregarious. It's an adjective. It means fond of company of others, so sociable, right? So gregarious converts that into an image. Uh, I picture I split it up into three or into two pictures right here. Um, a gray car, gregarious, gray car, and then for the rias part, I picture like rice. So gray car with rice. So just have that, store that in your mind right now, um, and we'll attest that to to the definition in a moment. So fond of company of others. I picture like very social uh, rice. Just maybe these rice. The rice comes to life, right? And they're very sociable. They're hanging out together, just having a good time. Maybe you see one on there um, for whatever reason. It's crying. Another one's making funny faces. Is I'm right, so rice, but he's just having a good time. So let's glue these two images together. Uh, we have are hanging out together in the great car. Maybe it's a party. Maybe they're at Gil. Right, go rice buddy, and you have um, you call up all your rice buddies uh, that went to Gills, and you pull up to get to the next and next year's Gills in a great car. Like you rent this huge great car, you pull up to Gills, and you're all having a good time, having a party in there, right? Um, and it's, you know, giving each other high fives and just having an all out, you know, a ball right there. Maybe the dance party, you know, how Juan DJs at the at the dances, and Omid was there as well. Uh, maybe you have Juan there, and Omid just doing a, a massive just party DJ, to bang some, some great music, right, some dance music inside of the great car, and all you guys are just like little rice people and having a good time in the car. So I want you to pick. Can you see this, Sergio? We rented the car at GY Less. We fully rented like a great car, which is crazy. That is, <laughs> that's, that's very true. Um, it was a pretty cool great car. I drove around for a bit. Um, so gregarious. Adjective. So, uh, for you guys at home, before Sergio gives you guys the answer, what do you guys think or actually know that it means? So, great, gregarious adjective. I'll give you one little trigger. Great car. <laughs> so, what do we picture with that? So, you have the story right now. I want you to translate back into the definition. So, what does gregarious mean? So, Sergio, if you can start off with the story and then give us the meaning for gregarious, that would be great. I have an awesome story for that. So. We rented a, a gray convertible Mustang. It's actually something that happened. It's not just like a visualized image. And I just picture going to P.F. Chang's when we went and getting, because we went to go get a Chinese or Thai or whatever kind of food, um, <clears throat> and getting some rice, and we were all hanging out together. And so I, I just picture in the gray Mustang with the P.F. Chang's just all hanging out. <laughs> Eat rice. <laughs> That's funny, man. Yeah, and then so what does it mean? What does gregarious mean? Uh, sociable, everybody hanging out. Yeah, so fond of company of others, sociable, just hanging out, having a good time. Well, All right, cool, cool. Um, next, we're here. Do we have any comments? Let's see. Um, so As of right now, no. Everyone went to town on the comments, and I think they're all just like taking heavy notes. All right, cool. <laughs> all right, we're just. Uh, you know you're on here. If you want to, feel free to comment the definitions or any questions at all. You can feel free to. If you want to just take notes and listen and wait till the end, that's cool too. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. Pokertude. So it's a noun. It means immense beauty. Pokertude. Immense beauty. So convert that into an image, picture, and I picture poker cards. I memorize poker cards pretty much for a living. Um, I know that's weird. But uh, so poker two, poker cards, and then two, I picture a toad. So maybe picture this toad and it has flowers. Um, and we'll go over the story in a moment. Immense beauty. Convert that into an image. So I picture like a beautiful queen or princess. So immense beauty. So picture someone that's very beautiful in your life. So immense beauty. Uh, glue those two pictures together. Um, while playing poker, the toad got a royal flush. For those of you that have played poker before and know kind of what the suits are, so royal flush or just pictures of you know very good quality cards. Right? Just picture that. Um, so it was playing poker and you got a very good deck of cards, um, good hand, and uh, it turned into a beautiful queen, beautiful elegant queen. So I want you to picture that. The toad got some good cards, and once it did that, I was like, what? What's happening to me? And then it converted into this poof beautiful queen as you see on the screen. So, Pogritude, beautiful queen. Um, what does it mean? So I want you to 
write in this comment section real quick. What does fortitude mean? Fortitude. Answer, Joe. Um, what does it mean for you? It means immense beauty. You got a, a frog. I see a bunch of frogs actually playing poker, and then one of them gets a, a royal flush. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but okay, and then uh, it turns into like a queen, or maybe someone uh, so has someone in his life. Maybe a picture turns into that person, a uh, beautiful, lovely lady, or um, yeah. So whoever uh, in your life, or just a beautiful queen. So share. Let me go back here. All right, cool. Uh, immense beauty. That's exactly what I mean. So quick test, you guys. Let's see if you guys can get this right. So quick test, and uh, by you guys. Um, I'm gonna test you guys at home. I'll, I'll break for a quick, you know, a few seconds, and I'll, I'm gonna test Sergio. So Sergio, uh, spotlight's on you in a moment. So we're gonna see if uh, you remember what all of these words mean. Yep. So, so Gary, number so one is benevolent. Oh, we're not going in order. Oops. I even remember it in order. <laughs> gregarious. Oh, man. Oh, man, we're gonna mix it up. We're not going in order. Um, so uh, gregarious. What does gregarious mean? So gregarious is. Fond of company and sociable, and I picture the gray car with the rice. And so I've actually got like this gray convertible Mustang cruising up the PCH on the coast of California on our way to PF Chang's. We're actually on our way home with like some leftovers, and we've all got some rice, and we're all hanging out eating together. <laughs> yeah, buddy, <laughs> sick man, and that, that actually happened. So all those things actually happened. <laughs> so fond of company of others, sociable. Uh, next one, tawdry. What is tawdry? Mean for all of you guys at home, write it down real quick. What does tawdry mean? Uh, remember, picture the story and then convert that into the definition. So, Sergio, go ahead and start off with the story and then give us the meaning for tawdry. Yep, so just so you all know, I, I, I only knew uh, benevolent and gregarious. I didn't actually know what this word meant until now. And it's basically <laughs> cheap and poor quality. And so I picture um, a towel that's dry and you're – trying to dry your hands or your face and the towel is just not working because it's made of such cheap quality. Exactly. So towel dry is very cheap and that's what it means. So it's, it's cheap, you know, essentially it's cheap quality, right? It's very cheap material. So uh, tawdry, boom, cheap and poor quality. <laughs> so a picture of the cheap and poor uh, towel that couldn't dry. Uh, next one, pokeritude. A lot of you more than likely have some strong images for this if you have a significant other. If not, just picture beauty. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll see if uh, Sergio can get this. I was almost going to use the answer. So Sergio, what is poker? <laughs> so it's, it's immense beauty. And so what I picture is poker and um, – it's a frog. What is it? It's, I picture a bunch of frogs playing poker, and then one of them gets a royal flush, and then the queen comes out. Exactly, yeah. So po it's frogs or toads, right? Oh, yeah, toad. Oh, why did I picture frog? Yeah, that was the picture I had in my mind. Poultry toad, yeah. poker frog, yeah. Or poker toad, <laughs> poker frog. <laughs> poker toad, yeah, yeah. What's the difference? I don't even really know. I mean, I, I picture like I, frogs too. Like yeah, I don't know. Toad. Frog and toad, it's probably like crocodiles and alligators. Who knows? Yeah, very similar. Um, but it's probably, as long as the word I associated was frog, though, instead of toad, yeah. I kind of put it there. But I remembered and the frog. So if I'd thought about it, it would have been like poker frog, poultry frog. That's not right. <laughs> it would have eventually got to. <laughs> that's where the yeah. comes in, right? If you review yeah. some times, you'll definitely. That's... Oh yeah, for sure. I wouldn't yeah. remember that it was toad and not frog. Yeah, but we just went over it once. Was great. That kind of helps you like put the images in your mind. But again, what helps you remember, this, especially like long-term memory, is reviewing. Reviewing is very important. Again, I'll go over some neuroscience at the end of this. That um, there's science that backs up why really reviewing is important. And Tony Robbins actually talks about this at his events at UPW. So go on to the next one real quick. So poker student does mean uh, immense beauty. So benevolent. Benevolent is an adjective. For all you guys out there, what does benevolent mean? Think of the images. And then, um, yeah, convert that into a definition. So oh, I'll, let me see if anybody has commented. Oh, immense beauty. I like that. Cheap. A bunch of people have been commenting all their answers, yeah. I love that. Keep it going, guys. So what does this word mean, benevolent? Write it down right now. And then, Sergio, go ahead and uh, off the top, man. What does benevolent mean? So I've really got a picture to kind. And so the picture that I have is actually my friend Ben, who's very kind, driving around in an Evo. And he's on his way to or to finally eat yeah. the Oreos because he gave it up for Lent. Ben Evo Lent. <laughs> <laughs> what you had was, yeah, yeah. and I also remember what you had. You had a bone, <laughs> and in an envelope, 
that you were giving to your dog because they were very kind and they earned it. And the bone had a little bit of lint on it. And then the dog finally gets it for being kind. He opens up the envelope. He uh, brushes off the lint. And then he just mouths the bone. So I remember Found both of those bones. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Uh, it's a powerful memory you had there, Sergio. i got to take some tips from you. <laughs> Yo, man, it's all you. It's all you. All right, so benevolent, uh, well-meaning and kind. It's exactly right. And then, uh, oh, yeah, the next one, sorry. Um, and then, yeah, so picture that. Get the story in your mind. Recall the story and then convert it back into an image. So it's great. I know there's people out there writing, so we'll go on to the next one. Uh, languid. It's an adjective, so languid. Um, if you want a quick little tip, so it's kind of split it up and see the images that you have for that. Languid. Um, Sergio, do you have this? I totally this? forgot this else? Was one wait, of the words. Right down with it. This was one of the words, but now that you say it, I fully remember the whole picture and what it means and everything. <laughs> nice. So, so it means lazy and slow moving, and um, so what I picture is a squid in a lane, but it's not even just plopped over. I'm like stuck in rush hour traffic, and it's just lazy and slow, just going really slow, hogging the whole lane, and I'm just like behind it trying to pass it. <laughs> a big lazy squid, languid. Yeah, just laying there, and squid just hanging out, and then we actually went over how to kind of uh, get away from that disempowering uh, state, you know, of being lazy and uh, you know having a strong reason why, having strong say rituals either in the morning or th throughout the day, uh, visualizing your day how it's gonna be like, right? So all those things will help you move away from that disempowering uh, state of being lazy and not wanting to do it. Again, sometimes it's good to just hang out, relax. When you've been busy, you put in work, right? You need to relax. It's very important. You, you need to just let go of all the stuff that you've been doing. But then sometimes we get stuck in those states. Again, an object that emotion tends to stay emotion, an object that rest tends to stay at rest, um, unless it's actually being either pushed by another object or another thing, another force, or if you're in motion, being stopped by another force. It could be, be yourself. To be, through uh, disempowering thoughts or beliefs, or by someone else, maybe your friends or family member saying you're you know you're doing really good, say in business or in school, and then there or in whatever activity you, you want to do, and then there's other people, another force stopping you. Maybe you have friends or family members saying you know you shouldn't really be doing that, right? You shouldn't be um, saying if it's in business. I when I was first getting into business, I had my own family member saying um, you shouldn't do that. You know, go and do this other thing, um, right? Stay stay doing this other thing that you that I didn't want to do. They wanted me to do it. Um, but I did it. So you have different people trying to slow you down, but you just have to keep going, right? To visualizing, to having a strong reason why you want to do it. Maybe it's for those same family members that you're wanting to do the certain activities that you want to do, right? Whether it's business or doing really well in school, getting those good grades. So you can go out and get a, you know, a very, uh, the, the career of your dreams, the job that you want. So uh, whether it's being a neuroscientist or being, I don't know, a dancer or a theater major, uh, so you can go on and act. I know there's a friend of ours out there, Nicholas Marino, that's what he's studying in school. Um, I know our friend Coco out there, um, she's uh, starting to be like a neuroscientist, so, uh, or certain neuroscientists out there, right? So uh, keep focus, keep going, object emotion, test the same emotion, so don't let the haters distract you from moving forward, right? And then it's also the opposite, it's true, language. Um, so it, it could either just be yourself, I don't want to get up, um, I don't want to do this or that. Visualize an empowering future, so that can kind of uh, move you forward, right? So, quick little teaching point on that right there. Let's uh, keep going. Uh, to the next one. So, yeah, language. Without energy, spirit, lazy, slow, sluggish. So, real quick, that's it for that one. Um, I have a few minutes. I know, Sergio, you said I have all day. But uh, <laughs> we'll go. <laughs> yeah, <that'll be> <laughs> well, actually, I want to show you this one real quick. I won't go into, into the whole thing. But um, how to apply this to other subjects, right? So, like, let's say biology. Um, no, that's not the screen. Uh, where is it at? Is it this one? Yeah. That's the same one. What's going on? Uh, Does it just switch it? Or just share your desktop and then and then open it up wherever. Yeah. Let's see. Is it this way? Here he is. This one. Um. Okay. What's on the screen right now? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is the one. This is the one. Okay, so real quick, guys. Can you zoom in? Yeah, that's good right there. 
Cool. So biology terms. So I'll go over a few quick biology terms. Um, like in case you're taking biology right now, okay, you're like, all right, Lewis, this is great. You know, some cool little words there that I just memorized. But what about like something like biology, right, or even history or chemistry or things of that nature? I memorized like, you know, periodic elements or a portion of that, uh, almost over half of that, right? Um, and and uh, students were testing, okay, what's this, uh, you know, element? What's that element? What's up? you know, atomic number for this element, and I would spin them off. Um, so what is, you know, for specifically for biology terms, how do you memorize biology, biology terms? It's the same exact technique. You, you have to be a creative storyteller. Turn the word into a picture, turn the definition into a picture, catch it together to create a story out of it. Um, go through uh, just a few words. Like, okay, we'll go over this one real quick. So osmosis. It's a long definition. A spontaneous net movement of solving molecules uh, through a particular... A permeable membrane into a region of higher solute concentration in the direction that tends to equalize the solute concentration on the two sides. Woo! <laughs> That's a lot. Of really but uh, we're going to simplify that for you guys in a moment. So, osmosis, um, before we do that, let's just turn the definition or the, I'm sorry, the word osmosis into a picture. I picture like a house, mouse. Some people I picture like Moses, right, from the Bible. Um, so, Moses, or whatever you think of when you see this word osmosis. So, maybe you have a friend named uh, Ozzy or, or Moses, right? So, maybe picture your friend as this image. So, I just picture like a house and a mouse. Um, so it's a very tiny little house with a mouse inside of it. So we'll simplify the definition. It just means particles moving from high concentration to lower concentration. Um, and we create a story out of that or create a picture out of that. So it's a balanced scale and it has cheese. So on one side there's a lot of cheese, so I, the, the scale is tipped over to that side where there's a lot of cheese. On the other side is a, you know, a few, few little cheese bits on there and um, it's not as heavy, right? So the higher concentration weighs more. Um, we create a little story out of that, glue those two images together. So inside of the mouse's house, he moved the cheese from the heavier side to the light side to balance out that scale. So I want you to picture that. So there's a scale, the mouse moved it over, right? He, maybe he's, he's selling cheese or maybe he was just uh, storing up a lot of cheese um, that he found throughout this the house, right? And uh, um, he got at the supermarket. I don't know, the, this mouse is... Uh, um, likes cheese a lot, so he likes to either buy it or find it on his own. Uh, very adventurous mouth. So I want you to imagine that, and he balances that out the the cheese. So he has a nice um, set of uh, say uh, of cheese for throughout the week or throughout the month or whatever the case might be. Maybe he's storing this for later on. So I want you to picture that very vividly, and I'll I will tell you right now. So I'm gonna ask, what does osmosis? Me. So I want you to picture how, uh, what did we picture for osmosis? House, mouse, then what was the story? And so then what does it mean? So, Sergio, osmosis, what does it mean? Um, I, I would like to spit the, the super long definition, but I don't know, it's kind of hectic. But it's basically moving from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. And the way I did that actually is because I drive in rush hour traffic every single day to work. And so rush hour, super high concentration, tons of cars, no one's really moving. And as soon as you get off the highway, it's like, oh, thank God, I can finally shift into third and fourth, <laughs> you know? And I actually pictured, for some reason, Oz and Moses, the Wizard of Oz, like that that green face or whatever, um, yeah. in Moses' big boat. Was Moses was the one. Uh -huh. Yeah, he was. And then... So I pictured the Wizard of Oz driving this big, huge ark. Or no, Noah's, no, the ark was Noah. Moses didn't have a boat, did he? Whatever. We're gonna. Oh, see like, he, he, he parted the, the Red Sea or something like that. He parted the sea. Um, I gotta oh, brush up on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me too. Whatever. <laughs> Moa bought. Maybe he parted the traffic Moa, or something. Okay. I don't know. All right, all right. Tell you how it's like this. Moa, Mo, <laughs> Moa, no. Moses <laughs> borrowed Noah's ark. All right, and. He lent it to his boy, the Wizard of Oz. So Oz is driving Moses' borrowed Noah's Ark in rush hour traffic. <laughs> then he finally gets off the highway. Osmosis. Boom. Higher concentration or lower concentration. That's probably yeah. way more complicated than it needed to be, but I found it. <laughs> Whatever you can associate. And for those of you at home, if you picture something out like what Sergio did, um, use that. Perfect. It's great. And I actually want you guys to do that. I encourage that. Don't just settle for my pictures. And... Same thing goes, like, let's say, let's apply that idea to life, right? Um, there's going to be individuals out there, whether it be, like, say, a Tony Robbins or other, say, speakers that you go to or just your friends, family members. They have certain ideas, certain uh, philosophies, life philosophies, and it's great. You don't necessarily have to abide by everything that they 
they say they, they live their life like. Um, however, you can take bits and pieces and maybe just create your own life philosophies, right? Um, you don't have to necessarily, what they call, you know, being, say, a totally you know, follower, be a leader, step up, um, take those ideas from different individuals and create your own, say, pictures or stories and your own belief systems and, uh, you know, live them every single day, right? So Sergio, he kind of got the idea of the stories that I created, but he didn't necessarily um, uh, fully pictured those for, for the way that he was going to remember this word osmosis. He said, okay, that's cool. Now let me kind of give my spin on it. Same idea, but just, you know, he gave his unique spin to to whatever idea that I had, right? And he created um, his story. So same thing with you guys. Back at home, um, people are going to give you, you know, different philosophies, different ideas. Take them, great, and then um, mold them to fit your lifestyle, right? Um, so as uh, an example for myself, is like time of your life, time management. Um, I know Brody gave a powerful talk on that. So, um, so life management for me, I've learned from Tony Robbins, and then I've learned from just being out in the workforce. I used to work at Directv, and they used to have an intense, like a crazy, like scheduling system where you knew exactly where you were going to be at exactly what point in time, how long a certain job was going to take you. Because I used to drive around from house to house installing cable. So what I've done is I've kind of molded, and then also school. School is just like that, you go for like an hour or whatever, 50 minutes, um, each class, right, and then you move on to the next class. So what I've done is kind of, I've, I've uh, combined all these different ideas of RPM from Tony Robbins and the things that I learned from, say, DirecTV, how they do their schedule, and things that I learned from school. I took all these different ideas, and uh, um, they're all powerful and great, but I just didn't stick to, say, just one. I combined what I like from all these different things, and I created my own uh, scheduling system, right, my own, like, little uh, time management model. I know Sergio has seen that. It can get very intense at times. Um, it's, like, very complex and complicated, but it just it, it's what suits me. It's not for everybody. I attempted to teach this to other individuals, but... Um, it's not for them, right? They've kind of then themselves also have taken ideas from that and created their own model of how they want to manage their time. And I know Sergio has his own way of managing his time. And if you want Sergio to kind of share, um, uh, you know, one of the ways that you, you do that for your life. How do you manage your time effectively? Yeah, so for a lot of people, they, they feel like they have to write everything down. And it's definitely awesome to write things down. I am totally down with that. For me, I took RPM and made it more of just a way of thinking. So when I think of something I have to do, I think of the outcome, which is the whole point of RPM, right? And then the reason why. A lot of people are like, oh, I have to write everything down and I have to have like huge charts and I have to have so much stuff. And that just, that works for some people for sure. For me, yeah. I more or less just, for some things you have to schedule it. So some things I put in my calendar for sure. Some things... I kind of like the uncertainty of, okay, I know I have to get this done. Let's see if I can make it happen today at whatever time, right? So different things, like you said, are going to work for different people. So you just got to see what works for you. Try out different things. Try it on. If it doesn't fit, whatever. And if it does, then awesome. And take a bunch of different ideas yeah. from different people. Like I've used part of your thing, which is cool. Um, yeah. and like the whole uh, carrying it forward to the next thing, which is definitely cool. Um, but, yeah, so... I would just take different ideas from different people, see what yeah, works I mean, for you, go with that. There's no right or wrong way. Cool, right? A lot of the time, I'm trying to use this same like technique that I'm teaching you right now, just visualizing, creating weird, crazy stories. Um, but we all have different pictures for all these different things. So going back to this, it's okay if you don't picture the same things that I do. Create your own. I encourage that. Again, when I'm with my students, I give them mine as kind of just as an example. If they want to use it, great. If they want to create their own, perfect. That's even better, right? Because now they have an emotional attachment to that because it came out of themselves, their brain. So uh, same thing with these techniques. I'll go over one more like biology term, and then we'll go into a few um, other cool stuff. Uh, names and then some neuroscience, maybe how to memorize like a quote, like what Sergio was talking about earlier, um, and then how to read and stay focused in what you're reading. So, all right, hold on one second. Let's see. I'm on here, right? Yeah, you can see the screen? Cool. Um, so let's do, like, let's say it's an acronym, right? Um, I know you guys are on the screen, you're like, why is there a diaper and a basket and a sumo wrestler? <laughs> I was going to yeah. teach you what all this is, actually diaploid, but uh, 
Yeah, that was one of the words. That's how I memorized the word dicoid. It means a sour organism consisting of two sets of chromosomes. So chrome, sumo, chromosomes. Anyway, uh, that's how my weird mind thinks. All right, so DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. That's very long. <laughs> deoxyribonucleic acid. So DNA. Now, what we do is we want to convert that into an image, right? Just like what we do with just regular words. So DNA, for acronyms, convert this into an image. I'm going to have helping out the decathlon team out here um, at a high school. And uh, for decathlon, they have to learn a lot of information in a short period of time, right? So um, we have like a acronyms for social science, and we have to uh, convert that into images in order to memorize. So I, I teach them this. Um, so for DNA, I picture a dinner plate, right? So maybe it's turkey dinner, except for Thanksgiving. Oh. Like I know in Canada, it was Thanksgiving recently. Um, uh, it's going to be Thanksgiving here next month for us in the States. And if you guys do that out elsewhere as well in the world, uh, you know, just picture maybe a turkey or a, a dinner plate um, uh, for DNA, right? So dinner plate DNA. Now, on um, deoxyribonucleic acid. How do we picture this? This one's kind of a little. You know, it has a lot of elements to it. So I want you to picture like a dog on an oxygen, like an oxygen that has an oxygen mask. Um, and then for the ribo, just picture ribs. And then nucleic acid, picture, I don't know, like nuclear acid. As you see on the screen right here, I have like plutonium, radium, uranium, just different uh, nuclear acid instead of like maybe a little test tube, right? Now we'll image this together so, uh, to create a little story. So the, the dog was on an oxygen, right? Um, the dog on an oxygen ate dinner because it was Thanksgiving. Um, and the dinner, the turkey dinner, got stuck on his ribs and he used nuclear acid to dissolve it. Now, I know it's a very complex story, but again, with review, you'll be able to remember exactly what DNA stands for. So, real quick, the, the dog, uh, deoxy, right, dog on an oxygen um, ate the dinner plate, and that represents DNA, and it got stuck on his ribs, so ribo, um, he, and he used nuclear acid to dissolve it, so nucleic acid. So, real quick, I went over it already uh, right now, but uh, Sergio, what does DNA stand for? Let's see if you get this, man. <clears throat> so we've got, hold on, i got to lay this out real quick. So we've got the <laughs> dog on oxygen, he's eating dinner, um, and it gets stuck in his ribs and he uses nuclear acid to dissolve it. So yeah. dog on oxygen, deoxy, yeah. um, ribs is ribose, yeah. um, um, nucleic acid, deoxy, ribonucleic acid. Yeah, deoxy, ribo, ribo? No, I think it's, well, deoxy, ribo. Ribo, deoxyribo, ribo, deoxyribo. Yeah. I'm sure Coco would know if she was on here. She's a scientist. <laughs> if anybody knows that word, the middle part of that word, <laughs> comment it in the comments. Jeff, maybe you know. I know you're on here. Deoxyribo, ribo, nucleic acid. However you say it, I, I spell it out for you. However you say it. Yeah, you can you definitely spell it right. If he saw it on a piece of paper and he needed to know uh, what, the, what that stood for, he'll definitely be able to write it correctly. So it, it's definitely deoxyribo, nucleic acid, or ribo, whatever. Um, and yeah, so that's what that stands for. Uh, real quick, boom, boom. Dr. Wright, you see the picture right there? The dog on the oxygen ate some dinner plate. That was rubbing. And DNA on his ribs, and he used nucleic acid to dissolve it. Now, guys, I know that's um, oh, real quick. Uh, do I have a test? I do, but it's fine. Um, so that's how you memorize vocabulary words, right? And um, and specifically, like let's say you know biology terms, or you have chemistry um, things to memorize, chemistry terms or ideas or principles. Just start creating stories. I taught you the basic element, right, of being a creative storyteller in order to memorize information. And it's all, if, if you take anything from this session, it's just to start doing that. In the beginning, like anything, it's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. It's going to be kind of difficult. You're going to be like, okay, I have this word, but how do I convert that into an image? Like I have a list of acronyms right here that I help the decathlon team out here memorize. Um, and then there's some out here like, how do we do this? Like I eat, um, where's the IEA? So like, I don't know if you can see that, like I E A. Right, you can see that right there. Uh, yeah, so International Energy Agency. So they're like, okay, how can we create that into an image? And I had an image already for myself, but then they were like, okay, how can we do that? How can we do that? I gave them a quick little trigger. Like IEA, I picture like IKEA, the store IKEA. 
um, and then they created their own using International Energy Agency, right? So international, maybe there's a globe out there. That, um, there's maybe a sofa, and there's a globe on top of the sofa at IKEA, and it's just shooting off a bunch of electrical energy everywhere, right? And then the agency, like this government agency, has to come in and get the, the this globe and the sofa out of there so it stops shooting electrical energy all throughout the store at IKEA. Now that's a weird and crazy story, and you'll be able to remember what that means through review. Um, uh, just by you know reviewing it a few times and seeing that image in your mind. So I want you to start practicing that. Maybe ask the dictionary <laughs> or get a book and just start uh, going over a few words and seeing how you can translate that into Im images. Again, at the beginning it might be kind of challenging because it's a new language. You're learning something brand new. Um, however, with time and with practice, you notice that you'll start getting these weird images popping out in, in your mind uh, very easily. So um, so yeah, that's for words. That's for definitions. Um, but what about like for numbers? For numbers, I use, I have like you saw earlier, I have pictures for every single number. So in my mind, I'm just seeing numbers um, for like 89, right? The football, top of my head. Um, I'll see the football for like 70, right? I'll picture a case. For 40, I picture a rose. I picture maybe a rose bush, right? Um, for 40. And then I attach that to a location in my mind. So I want you to do that. I want you to start creating. Uh, images for for numbers. If you want to start memorizing numbers, right? So create uh, weird images for all these different numbers. And I have actually a system. If you go to my website, 80mind.com, um, I have uh, all the pictures that I've created for my numbers. I have them on there. So if you click on the memory training tab, you can see all of the different images that I created for numbers. So if you want to, if like let's say that's the first thing you want to tackle, like I want to be able to memorize a 20-digit number, right? Or just even something that's basic as somebody's phone number. Um, like I do that, I go out with friends and I'm like, hey, can you go and memorize that girl's phone number? I'm like, well, yeah, I could, and, and then I do it, and then you know they get it all, they're all impressed by it. It's a pretty cool little uh, fun game that we do. Um, so you know, memorizing people's phone numbers or just memorizing uh, historic dates, right? Um, it, you want to create these stories, and the first step is to translate them uh, into pictures. So I know I'm getting a few dings over here. I think that people are commenting on here. Um, I think Jeff got the word for DO or <clears throat> deoxyribonucleic acid. I asked him if it's ribo or ribo. Yeah. Oh, we'll Jeff, he's softer heart. <laughs> softer. Um, yeah, toes are bigger. Okay, nice. Everybody's Julian, Ariana, like that. Um, cool. So, um, I really don't want to spend that much time uh, on here, even though I can, I can spit out like another five hours worth of content. But um, yeah, so for numbers, convert them into pictures. If you need help with that, again, go to my website. Um, and then another thing is creating locations. So I said, like, on top of my head, I got body locations. So I have the top of my head, like my nose, my mouth, and then I attach different things happening. I also have, like, maps inside of my brain where I'm seeing, um, like, my house, right? I'm seeing different spots inside of my house, and then I number them. So maybe, like, that poster right there could be number one. Um, the, like the little cabinet thing right there down below is like a number two. The blinds are number three. The door's number four. Maybe this computer right here is number five. And then I use that to attach my images. So if I want to memorize, uh, I don't know, a ten-digit number, I'll just pick. I have two um, for every two-digit number, I have a picture. So I'll associate them to each one of the locations. When I want to recall that, I just go back and review those images, right? So that's something that you guys can do. Again, go to my website and you'll be able to see. Um, exactly how to do that. I have a bunch of videos where I teach you how to do all that. Um, for, I don't know, for quotes, Sergio, do you have a quote that you need help memorizing? Um, let me see. Let me check my notes. Maybe I do. <clears throat> so I'm giving a talk on Monday. It's basically about, it's to an insurance company about sales. And it's mostly shifting the mindset from selling to serving. And so my first chunk, I have three chunks. The first chunk is influence. That's the only key word, and I'm going to go on for like 20 minutes about that. Then what stops us from taking action? And then when you do take action, what are the biggest roadblocks? So I have all of those different things. I'm trying to see where the quote is for it, though. Um, it's actually more of a definition than a quote. Okay. If not, I'm pretty sure I got something here. So I've got the definition of manip to manipulate and to influence. It's two different things. So I've got in my, in that first chunk, I have those two definitions that I want to memorize. And we kind of did cover definitions, actually. But I guess yeah. a definition and a quote is kind of the same thing. Yeah. 
Like right, right here, I have. Um, okay, let, let like let's say, I don't know. I'll I'll, I'll share this one. Quick. Um, maybe this can tie into that. Actually, uh, no. I have a good idea. You guys yeah. are gonna go see Marianne Williamson pretty soon, right? Uh, let's do her actually, quote. It's kind of long, but let's do like a little chunk of it. Memorize speeches? Oh, you already have a thing. Wow, you're sick. <laughs> oh, we, no, no, yeah, that's that one. It is our light, not not our darkness, said most friends. Our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Um, is that the one? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our deepest fear. All right, let's pull it up. Let's see if we can share the screen. Deepest fear. You guys probably have all heard of that one. Actually, is there like a? I'm pretty sure there's a video. Can you see that? Uh, it's just a black screen. Maybe if you press play, something will come up. Really? Ah. Um. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Uh, oh, that, duh. <laughs> uh, okay, I know how. What about now? You right. see anything? No, I kind of died. Okay. What about what if I just do this? Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Excuse my tabs, guys. I'm uh, I'm I'm actually in the process of creating my own school, so I'm like modeling after other schools right now. So there's like the accelerated schools in Los Angeles. So I have these tabs open right now, <laughs> like different academies and stuff. So I'm gonna have the A Mind Academy, which will be very powerful. It's gonna open up in twenty. So if you guys are still in high school, um, yeah, stop it. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's see. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. It's not just in some of us. It's in and as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same as we are liberated from our own fear. Our presence automatically liberates others. Sir, I just want to say thank you. You saved my life. All right. So, let me see. Stop sharing. Were you able to see that, Sergio? Yeah, yeah. Coach Carter, man. He's the best. <laughs> so that's... Um, that, yeah, no, let me see if I can pull it up. Here. Uh, you didn't just memorize that as he was saying that, did you? <laughs> oh, I actually I know like a good chunk of this already because uh, I've memorized it in the past. But um, but yeah, well, I'm gonna. <laughs> our deepest fear is not that we're not. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens frightens us. Um, and yeah, but that was uh, let's see. Okay, right here. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to memorize this. All right, let me see if I can share this again. This one, this one. Okay, can you see that? Nope, it's all black. Oh, yeah, we can, we can. Okay, I don't know if this is the greatest image. Let me see if I can find another one. Um, that one's good. Okay, this one's good. This one right here? Yeah. Okay, so our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. I guess we'll just do like that one or maybe the second line as well. Um, so our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. So what we have to do is kind of like what we do with words, right? We have to uh, create images for this, and we what I do is I split it up into sex to like chunks. So 
um, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. So our deepest fear, I, I, what I picture is maybe there's a deep well, right? Maybe it's a super, do you guys know what a well is? Uh, well, I get no response. Sergio, do you know what a well is? I'm pretty sure you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big hole in the ground, some water in it, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our deepest, so maybe something very deep or maybe just a deep like hole somewhere in the ground. So our deepest, right? Our deepest, so picture something very deep and fear. At the bottom of that, it's like your deepest fear. What do you fear? Maybe there's like alligators down there or something that you just fear uh, very heavily. So something uh, that's very fearful. I don't know, there's like monsters down there or um, maybe it's like a character from a scary movie or something like that, right? So you picture what you fear down there um, at the bottom of this well, so it's super deep. Our deepest fear um, is not that we are inadequate. So, and now you're like, you're throwing your hands in the air, okay? So you're looking down, can you see me? Yeah. Looking yeah. down at the well and you're like, no, like, it's not, so it's not, kind of like this, it's not. Or, what you can also picture is not, like tying a knot, right? Maybe it's a tying a knot. Um, because you're going to go down there and you have a rope and you're tying a knot because you want to go down to the bottom of the water. Face your fear. I don't know. Something, whatever you picture for that, right, for is not, um, that we are inadequate. So inadequate. Sergio, what can you picture for inadequate? How can you visualize that word? Inadequate. I would picture, <laughs> I picture something yeah. funny, but actually for some reason went right to food and I picture like some food that just isn't enough. It's just inadequate. So like, a plate of nachos where you okay. only have like a tiny, tiny little bit on it, <laughs> but you didn't like eat it all. It's like that's how it came, <laughs> straight out of the kitchen. All right, In inadequate. Okay, perfect. Now, inadequate. So, how can we directly kind of get a trigger for the inadequate part, right? So you, maybe it's like food that you haven't eaten. It's not. It wasn't enough. That's kind of what it means. So, how can we, um, or what, what do you picture for the actual, let's like, say, word? Word? Uh, inadequate. Inadequate. Um, inadequate. I'm trying to picture what the word even looks like. i got to write it down so I can see what it looks like. <laughs> if, you guys, if you guys at home, what do you guys picture? Uh, here it is. Let's uh, put this to the test right away. What do you, I have one in my mind already, right? But um, I, I want to see from you guys. What do you picture in your mind uh, when you see that word inadequate? Inadequate. I'm asking everyone right now in the chat. For the, for the second part, I picture a quake, like an earthquake for some reason. Okay. And then the beginning, I picture indie. Indie quake, inadequate. <laughs> Perfect. Maybe it's like an Indian in an earthquake or something. I don't know. Um, uh, well, do you, yeah, well, yeah, indie. Indie. Maybe it's an indie race car driver. I don't know. Some some weird like that, right? Um, or whatever you picture for indie. So anybody else has any images for that? Let's see. Keep my door locked. It goes next year. Well, oh my God, Jeffrey. Um, this guy. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. Anyway, so um, so yeah, maybe a picture like an ad, right? In the ad, in the, right, inadequate. In the ad, there was like there was a big billboard ad. And it was talking about, I don't know, maybe, I picture for inadequate, I picture like, I don't know, like dogs, uh, not dogs, uh, ducks quacking, so quick, quack. Um, but you can maybe picture like, there's a huge earthquake coming, so quake in the app, right? So you're tying the knot, you're, what is it, our, what is a well? Our deepest. Deepest, right, it's super deep. And then what's at the bottom? Your fear, a bunch of crocodiles. Right? And then you're tying a knot, right? Maybe because the earth, you see that at the billboard over there, it's inadequate. Um, inadequate in the ad, there's a quake. And you're tying a knot, so maybe you tie that around yourself so you don't fall into the well. I don't know, something weird like that, right? So what you have, right, you have these different images, and then you create a little story out of them, right? So let's see if we can kind of uh, picture that right now. So um, we have the well and the crocodile, something, something at the bottom. So what's that first part, Sergio? Our deepest fear, and then, well, you're, tying and then you're tying like a knot, knot, so that were inadequate. Mm -hmm. Inadequate. So then you. So all you need is little triggers. Now I know this was like, man, that's a lot, a lot to remember. Um, it might be even more challenging that just remembering the phrase going over and over again. Again, in the beginning, it's a little more challenging. Once you go over this again, we we have to do this. Uh, there's an event where we have to memorize a poem in the USA Memory Competition and.
and we much of that as we possibly can. Um, so this is all that we're doing. Where because we've done it so much already, the mental athletes, we can create these stories in milliseconds. I see when I memorize a 114 digit number, I create or say a, just a 100 digit number, I create 50 miniature stories in my mind in five minutes. So what I'm giving you right now, I do that like in milliseconds, right? And then I just review that information. Uh, <laughs> oh, we're almost done. <laughs> nah, you want to be in here? Say hi to everyone? No, come say hi. <laughs> no, I don't want to. <laughs> Just come in. We're almost done. Um, so we have a, a guest here. You guys don't know this Put movie? her on the spot. Make her memorize something. <laughs> memorize 100 digit number. Uh, hi. <laughs> um... Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> She's still like sleepwalking right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have uh, like I said, Adriana and Juan here. Um, so yeah, they actually it was funny. They actually gave me like uh, they brought a friend over, Parker, right? His name. Yeah, um, Parker. So with names, I pictured. So let's let's use that. So for names, uh, for Parker, I use like Peter Parker, Spider Man, right? To remember that that's his name. Um, so he gave me uh, like a long number, and then I memorized it right there, and then they saw me recall it. I was like drawing in the air. It was pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, so turn things into pictures, recall it, attach you know different images to it, um, and create stories out of it, and that's how you'll be able to remember pretty much anything that you want to remember, right? So that's, uh, I mean, that's pretty much all that we do, man. All of that you want to memorize words, if you want to memorize numbers, if you want to memorize names, turn names into pictures. Sergio, I put up this post uh, a while ago. Um, so Sergio, what I picture was like a surge protector, right? Um, and I, maybe it's like in the shape of a lightning bolt. And whenever I see Sergio, I might picture, right, there's a lot of electricity on his, just shooting out of maybe, I don't know, his ears or his eyes. And then I plug in a surge protector there to protect um, himself from... I don't know, maybe putting out too much electricity or something like that, right? So surge protector, surge Joel, surge protector. Um, and yeah, you guys all know what that is. Surge protector is like this, this, uh, the strip where you plug in all your outlets. So I want you to start doing that with every person that you meet. Start turning their names into pictures. Do that with your family members. Turn the name into an image and then associate that with them somehow, some way. So for me, Lewis, um, I picture if. I picture either a friend Lewis or I picture like a shoelace, right? Shoelace wrapped around their head. For my for my middle name Angel, maybe I picture like my ears are angel wings or something like that, right? And I'm flapping away. So um, turn names into pictures, associate that with the body somehow or with the face. And next time that you see them, all you have to say is, okay, what was the image that I created? And then it'll pop up, right? For me, it's like a shoelace with angels, Lewis Angel. Sergio, what did we put on Sergio's face? Surge protector, right? So, um, Sir Joe, you remember that that's a surge protector. So, that's names. Uh, the poems, our deepest fears, not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fears that we are powerful beyond measure. Um, so, you can keep going on and on. Um, and all you have to do is create stories, create pictures, create stories, and you will be able to memorize anything. With, uh, Let's say if you're reading something, right? Let's say it's a book. Um, start getting to the habit of... I want you to imagine from this point forward that we've all seen movies, right? Um, even like say music videos. I want you to imagine like you're the director, you're the star director of this big movie, you have a huge budget, and your uh, your purpose is to create the most magnificent movie. You have all the CGI in the world, you have the best actors in the world, and you have to create this amazing movie. So while you're reading, I want you to start creating the movie in your mind. So create it by reading, right? So whatever it is that you're reading, I want you to visualize the things that you're reading because that's going to help you to stay focused. Because as soon as you stop visualizing it, you know that you stop paying attention to the story. If you start thinking about what you're going to do later on today, or maybe it's school and you're like, oh man, there's a pretty girl over there and I didn't talk to her, right? You start thinking of all these different things going on um, outside of what you're reading, then you know that you're not paying attention to the to the book and you're going to just keep turning the pages like I used to do and be page 20 and you're like, I have no clue what I just read. So in order to avoid that, visualize what it is that you're trying, that you're reading. And you don't necessarily have to picture every single little word on there, but just maybe the overall idea of, say, that sentence or that paragraph, right? Um, and that will help you to keep focus. So, I mean, those are quick tips, some neuroscience. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm not going to get into too much detail on this, but we have neurons inside of our brain, and these neurons, they work with electric electricity, right, electrical flow. So, 
And this is where the review aspect comes in. You want to review the information because space repetition is the mother of all skill. If you've been to UPW, you've heard Tony Robbins talk about this, where, um, like, let's say we're kind of like electricity. I have light here. I have a computer. Um, your charges for your phones. Electric electricity flows through that wire, right? And um, if you wanted to get from point A to point B, what happens is there's insulation that wraps around that copper cable inside of that, inside of the, say that charger, and it helps electricity flow smoothly. Same thing with our neurons. Our neurons inside of our brains, when we're learning something new, we just have the axon, right? Which is just kind of like say a cable that allows electricity to flow from one point to the next so it can keep repeating that cycle and communicate with other neurons. So when we're learning something new, that neuron is bald. There's no insulation around it to help the electricity flow smoothly, right? So when you're learning something new, what helps it move faster or move fluidly without the electricity spewing off everywhere is something called myelin. Okay, there's myelin, there's this white thing wrapped around your axon or this like cable, we'll just call it cable for right now. It wraps around it and it helps electricity flow smoothly. Same thing with the cable. You don't just see like a copper cable exposed, right, when you're charging your phone. If that happens, more than likely that charger is not going to work. So you see like this, um, you know, if you open it up, you'll see like a white insulation and then there's even like a plastic around that, right? So it helps electricity flow smoothly. So when we're reviewing, the way that we build myelin is with the review process. So whenever we review something new, especially something like say, uh, you know, these techniques that we're learning, um, you want to review the information because you're building more myelin and you're allowing that electricity to flow much more quickly. So when you're taking the test, it doesn't take you 100 years to recall the information because you've reviewed it, you've uh, done space repetition, you'll be able to recall it very quickly when you see um, a question that uh, you know relates to something you studied earlier, right? So myelin on the neurons and that helps the electricity flow smoothly and the way they build that is by what? Reviewing. Space repetition is the mother of all skill. Again, Tony Robbins talks about this. Um, there's this book out there um, that you can get. It's called The Talent Code. So you know that talks all about that. And then there's other books that talk about this as well. So if you're really into like myself, I'm really into the brain. Uh, so you know you can get that, that book right there. There's other books focused. Um, I have a list of a bunch of books on my website uh, as well, amine.com. So, or if you want, you know, other book recommendations, just shoot me a message here on Facebook, or just put it up on the Gills Momentum session, like Twitter, and then I can give you an entire list of books that I recommend to help you um, learn about the brain and just learn about how we learn as humans, right? Um, so that's pretty much it, Sergio. I know I went a little bit above uh, our scheduled time, but um, yeah. but yeah, man, I, I just love this subject. I love this subject. I teach it to others, and I'm going to continue. Continue to do this because it is, like you say, is my mission. I'm running my mission, so I have it here somewhere. <laughs> uh, running my mission. Um, yeah, so I, I love this topic, man. So I hope this was helpful to all of you guys. Um, and yeah, I put out videos on this, and I hope uh, you guys could watch them and learn a little bit more about what it is that we do here at AIDMind.com. So, Sergio, back to you, man. Awesome. All right, man. And we'll see you all next week.